Hello, folks, and happy April Fool's Day. I am going after the Sombrero Galaxy, and so far, I have 75 minutes of Elpro data on it, and I have 60 minutes of red, and 30 minutes so far of green. And I want to finish off green and blue today, so I'll have 60 minutes each of RGB, and that 75 minutes I have of LPRO data is going to be added onto the 2.8 hours of CLS data I had from last year. That will give me around 7 hours on the sombrero. If, if that looks good when I put it all together, I'm going to stop there and say done. If it doesn't look good, I'm going to grab more LPRO data. So that's the plan. But right now I'm, I'm having a lab because I mentioned it's April 1st. And uh, Doug and Jason are outside imaging right now as well. Well, they're not outside. We're all indoors, and but we're all imaging. But I'm playing an April Fool's joke on them. I told them, WTF, my mount is on fire. <laughs> I got to go. <laughs> and I'm just watching the messages they're sending now. <laughs> they're like, what is going on? And let me, let me see what they're saying right now. Doug is saying I, he didn't know a fire was possible, and Jason is saying that I he wishes Chuck had a an internet surveillance camera so he could actually watch what was going on. Yeah, <laughs> he wants to see me have that meltdown. That's real nice. Or at least he just wants to watch it for entertainment purposes. Oh, this is hilarious. I'm just gonna stay quiet for a while and and see if they send any more messages. Uh, I'm having too much fun with that. But anyway, um, I'm, I'm doing green right now. I'm on. I'm doing 30-second exposures at gain, let's see, 75, 15, offset 15. The mean readout is really high. Um, my neighbor, my next-door neighbor has her, her outside light on again. But you know what? I just don't want to keep texting her and having to ask her to, to turn it off. And it looks like, uh, let me turn this off here. Oops. It, it looks like I can still see the sombrero well enough. I've got to, I wish I had cleaned my, my, uh, my, I, I bet this spec is big enough. It's probably coming from my Hotec flattener because I switched from a reducer to a flattener. I'm sure I should have cleaned off that, that Hotec before I started. So anyway, I've got that big spec going on, but I'm pretty sure flats will take care of that. Now let's take a look at my guiding. I haven't even looked at it in the low south yet. I'm doing high dithers here. Um, I'm almost as low as I can go. This sombrero is low in the south. So even at 0.86, I'll take it because earlier I was capturing the um, M81 galaxy and I was in the 0.3 range. I even posted something in that community tab on my YouTube channel so you guys could see how good my guiding was for once. But um, yeah, it's bumpy, but that's okay. Um, we'll see how this goes. I'm hoping I can finish it tonight and... I'm going to keep watching these messages that Doug and Jason are sending. I'm just going to stay quiet and let them think I have a real emergency going on. Okay, I'll see you guys later. Hooray! I have finally finished a galaxy. I cannot believe it. It seems like it's been forever. But let me show you what I've got here. So the first thing is, I combined my 75 minutes of LPRO data with... 2.8 hours of CLS data that I captured last year. So I think that comes to a little over four hours. I probably should have added on a couple more hours of LPRO data, but I was so anxious to just get something done. I just went ahead and processed it. But let me show you. Let me turn my phone off here. I can hear it beeping. Okay, let me show you what I've got here for the LPRO data. I just wanted to show you. Uh, um, this is the drizzle data. And this is the non-grizzled data. And um, obviously, um, I thought the galaxy was so small that the rotation, even though I, I, I didn't bother to check what the rotation was last year, but wow, it was 
<laughs> about as off as I could have been. That, that's pretty bad. So I actually ended up cropping a lot more than I thought I was going to. But oh well. But like I, I mentioned with the Owl Nebula, when I capture small objects, I, I really like to drizzle because it will increase your, your resolution without a loss of quality. In fact, they say it might even add detail, which I haven't really seen that, but um, at least I can get a I can get in closer on the sombrero because look at um, the ratio on these is both one one to six and look how much bigger um, the sombrero is it's uh, uh, twice as big so anyway that that's what drizzling will do for you and so that's that and let me show you uh, the rest of my data here. So everything is cropped now and everything is drizzled. So that's my L Pro data, about about four hours of L Pro and CLS data combined. This is one hour of red. Um, this is uh, um, no processing. Um, this is just uh, how it came right out right after integration. So that was one hour of red. This is um, one hour of green. And this is one hour of blue. So that day doesn't look too bad. Despite the pointing into the worst area for light pollution, the low south is where I have it the worst. I think it came out pretty good. And let's see what I did after this. Okay, so I actually... I was thinking about doing a um, dynamic background extraction on each individual filter, and I, I just got lazy. No, I'll just combine the data first, and then I'll I'll do the DBE or the ABE, whichever one I, I decide to use. So, and I didn't do a linear fit. Linear fit was giving me uh, weird results. I know there's other ways to, to get your data to look uh, even in brightness, but I just, oh, well, I, I skipped it. it didn't, they didn't look too far off. So this is what my combine looks like. And that's actually not too bad. Could have been worse. I thought that's actually a pretty clean combine. This is the, using the LRGB combine in Pixinsight. I thought it looked pretty clean. I can definitely work with this. And uh, let me show you after. I decided to just run an ABE after this, though. Let me show you how this looks. The ABE definitely cleaned up, uh, cleaned it up a little bit, um, and, and it looks like uh, that big dust speck is actually lingering around. So I didn't like to see. And I noticed though, the higher in light pollution you go, the less effective. In my case, I noticed the flats are, and my my data was a little bit too bright. So, but anyway, I, it, it it doesn't matter. I it it this went away anyway the farther I got in processing. So that's my combine, and then that's my combine with the automatic background extraction. And uh, after I ran the, the ABE, I did a color calibration on it. And I, I like what it did for the background, although it, it turned my galaxy <laughs> from gold to a little bit reddish, or whatever that is, brownish. That's okay, though. I, that's simple to fix later. Um, I think I just tweaked the red to bring back the gold, but I, I still like the one on the left better. All right, let, let's keep moving along here. And, and just so you know, I am definitely uh, not an expert with LRGB processing. It's been a long time since I've done it, but it was it's a lot of fun though. Um, all right, so I did a histogram on my RGB data. So um, that's the, the histogram. And then I did, uh, and I rotated it. And I did a histogram on my LPRO data and ran a DBE on it, or DBE, then the histogram that is. And that's what my LPRO data looks like, the LPRO and CLS combined. I keep, keep calling it LPRO, but it's both. And from what I've heard is you are supposed to get as far as you possibly can in process in processing the RGB before you finally add the uh, the luminance to it. 
and I, I tend to get anxious and I just want to throw it in right away and then work on the data. That's just me, but I, you know, a lot of people, they, they have their own way of doing things. So, so let me show you what it looks like after I added the luminance to it. All right. Now, this is RGB, and now this is a plus the, the RGB plus the loom and CLS data. So what do you think? I think it, uh, I think it definitely um, helped with the noise. Um, it didn't really add much definition to the galaxy itself, and it's kind of a small galaxy for me to be working with with my focal length. Um, and, the, and the other thing is I only had around four hours or so of, of the data of the LPRO and CLS data when I, I've heard a good guideline is if you have one hour each of RGB, you should go at least six hours uh, of, on the luminance side. And so I'm probably a couple hours short. And I knew I should have, but like I said, I was in a hurry. I wanted to get this done. I couldn't wait. So after I combined it, then it was, um, now I, that's it for, for me when it comes to standard steps. Now I go off into the wilderness and anything goes. I did some denoise. I tried some sharpening. I, I played with the color a bit. I was switching between Photoshop and PixInsight. And let me show you what I can, I mean, there's just, I have no standard process after this. And that is what my end project looks like. Um, I, I, got, I, put it, I got the gold back a little bit. I tried to add color to the stars. I looked on Astrobin to, to look at good pictures of the sombrero and get a feel for how dark people were making the, the, the background. So I think I'm close to that. I don't, you don't want to overdo it, make it too dark, but you don't want it too late either. And that's, that's my final image here on the right. And um, actually, and, and, and this is actually the second pass I made through. I, this is when I started all over again to see if I missed anything and if it would turn out different. But it would it pretty much turned this out the same. This is my first try at it. And then I started all over again. And it they came out very close to the same. But I do like the one on the right. I thought the one on the left, and for my taste, the yellow steel looks a little too gold. Um, but maybe a lot of people will prefer the one on the left. In fact, I'm, maybe a lot of people will. But for me, um, it's a tough call. But my taste, I like the one on the right. So uh, that's, that's what I've got, folks. Um, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video or you got something out of it. And at the end of the video, I'm also going to show you I worked on another prom animation for the for the sun uh, but I had big gaps because of the clouds so you can see I've got some divots where you see that the prom animation sliding and I'm like oh but I, I couldn't rec reconcile the first uh, batch of data I had with the, the next round after the clouds passed and I just couldn't put the two together without getting that that divot going back and forth but it still looks cool um, anyway I will see you later. Thanks for watching, folks.